I wish you could see that. Pretty nice. The fall colors over here. Hey guys, welcome to Ukrainian couple with uh, me, Ira and Oreo. And um, in this video, we're going to talk about uh, six things that Ukraine does better in America, I believe. And uh, how I see America after 10 years of living in Ukraine. But before I start off with this video, I want to say that even though I'm not in Ukraine, even though I'm not in Poland or Canada, even though I'm here in the United States, I want to make it clear that I, will, I want to do everything that I can to support Ukraine. And that includes, I want to come up with a donation drive, with a fundraiser, with uh, anything like that, uh, that can be long term, that can support Ukraine. And I believe I can do that here more effectively, right? So um, if you have any ideas of what I can do, just, uh, you know, leave a note uh, in the comments section. Uh, or you can just like and subscribe. A lot of people watching this are not subscribed. And, uh, you know, just liking, subscribing, sharing this content, you know, could be a way that you could support Ukraine as well. So without further ado, let's just get into this video. I mean, uh, to start it off, uh, it's been a few weeks uh, that we've been here in the United States. And I saw that I'm getting messages like uh, in a previous video. Um, oh, um, you have rose colored glasses on about the United States. Oh, the BGs are British. They're not really American. Um, and all the blues artists, uh, they were all, uh, you know, African slaves that came to the United States. But, you know, yeah, you're right. But eventually all these people, right, that came to the United States, right? They, they realized the dream in the United States, not back home where they were. And the American societal and economic machine actually helped them reach their potential and helped them get to the level of fame that they were at. It's very beautiful around here but I think I'll have to walk the other way to avoid all the sun. So guys, forgive me for the clickbaity title, but today I want to give uh, some credit to Ukraine and about, uh, you know, the things that it does well. So here are the six things that Ukraine does better than America, in my opinion. But as with everything, I do have to point out some caveats. Uh, they may um, sort of invalidate some of these points that I'm making, but like I said, they're just caveats. Nevertheless, let's get to it. Number one, I believe that Ukraine has less bureaucracy in some respects. Uh, I mean, of course, Ukraine is quite bureaucratic and uh, the procedures take forever, uh, just like in America, but Ukraine is at war and it gets even worse over there. But let, let's just be honest, uh, the rule of law in Ukraine was always a little bit weak. I mean, certain laws have always been treated like suggestions and people kind of skirt over laws. Uh, and the role of police now is like is elevated, especially because of martial law and, and all that, right? So, I mean, um, on the flip side though, it does uh, translate into more compromise, more talking about the issue at hand and uh, less too happy people, less people that are like stick to the rules and that sort of thing. So it, it does have its positive aspects when you think about it. Um, the caveat though is the um, instability, right? And the fact that the laws are so convoluted and it doesn't really protect you in any way, right? You can get a fine or ticket for something that you've already done and uh, it, it, it's rampant over there in Ukraine. I mean, let's consider a simple fact that you have a car, right? And you get a chip in the windshield, right? Well, in most states in America, uh, you're going to have an inspection that you have to go through. Your car goes through an inspection before you purchase it. And um, they'll do that in Ukraine as well, right? But in Ukraine, uh, nothing will stop a police officer from just like stopping you every time you drive out if you get a chip after you purchase the car. And like, uh, they can also stop you without proof. They can um, like record you on your personal phones and they may not have an appropriate ID on them. So basically it's this blatant unprofessionalism. And um, I mean, that, that's what I've seen in Ukraine and haven't changed. And I really hope that goes away after the war. But to give Ukraine some credit, I guess, there really is 
less bureaucracy when it comes to certain things from like getting construction permits to getting some health procedures done or medical procedures done or getting phone contracts signed up and stuff kind of stuff so it's, it's a bit better in that sense oh what a beautiful view i have in front of me guys i wish you could see that pretty nice the fall colors over here not so bad so the number two things that Ukraine does better than America is restaurants. You really can't deny that Ukraine has great food, great dishes for low prices. I mean, this applies to like lower priced restaurants, cheaper food. I mean, I really miss uh, the variety of Ukrainian soups, borshes, potato dishes, like uh, fish, herring dishes, and like even their sloppy, heavy on the mayo salads. I mean, I really like those mayo salads. Oh, look at that. Mr. Uh, and Mrs. Uh, air duct man and woman. Yeah, so the key here is if you live in America and you find a European or Ukrainian food market, you know, go down there, drive down there, um, uh, talk to the people there. They're probably Ukrainian. They're going to give you some pointers about what to buy, what not to buy, how to make certain dishes. I mean, that's the thing. If you really like Ukrainian food in America, you're going to have to make it yourself. I mean, that's, that's, there's no way around it. And if you're lucky enough to have a Ukrainian food market nearby, you know, that's great, right? It's the truth that a lot of people coming from abroad find that um, the food in America is pretty standardized. You have the burger, the fries, and uh, you really need to look hard to find something special. But I believe it's there. The food scene in Ukraine is very interesting. In having experienced the American dining experience and what it has to offer, uh, you can find quite a lot depending on the state and the area that you're in. For example, I believe that America has amazing chains, like, like no, no other place in the world that has great chains, uh, restaurants uh, with, I mean, chains have their own issues, but chains are standardized and there are many of them. So you can like, really try out, out every single chain uh, out here and uh, find something interesting, find something special that you may not find back home. As a cherry on top, I guess what I like about American restaurants is the fact that you can get free water at restaurants. It's, it's kind of funny, but uh, and uh, in Ukraine, I wasn't able to do that. I think it's a more of a European, uh, you know, American thing. But, uh, you know, that was a pleasant surprise for me personally. Number three things that are great about Ukraine is the Ukrainian bank applications, the mobile applications. Um, one of the things that I absolutely loved back home about Ukraine is a convenient bank apps, both on the desktop and the mobile app. Uh, they're great and they give you a full spectrum of services. For example, you can get a notification when your balance changes. You get pretty much 24 seven chat with a live person, not a robot that always answers you. And he will actually answer you and resolve your issue right on the spot. It's very, very pleasant, very nice and convenient. Um, you get cards that work globally, you know, many people think Ukraine's banking system is very, very like difficult, closed up. No, you get banking, banks uh, that are global banks and they work around the world, including in Ukraine, right? The caveat though is that, uh, especially now with the banking system uh, not so stable because of the war, there are huge restrictions that Ukraine gives you. If you want to withdraw money, if you want to withdraw US dollars, uh, it's pretty difficult right now with that and um, you get a pretty bad exchange rate that's pretty bad as well the american dollar is worth about 40 hryvnias i think uh, on the private exchange market and um, if you want to take your us dollars out or buy us dollars i think it's a bit difficult number four ukraine has this thing called dia and dia is a sort of a collection of government services in a smartphone. It's like a one app that you have to keep updating uh, for it to work properly. Uh, but um, it keeps everything on your phone, like your ID cards, your driver's license, your administrative and court, I don't know, records and so on, that kind of stuff. And um, it was held as a success by many international organizations, including American organizations. They said it's a great technology, it's great. I think Estonia is doing something similar and you know, Ukraine wanted to emulate that. It's actually a very convenient thing to use. And in the country, it's recognized everywhere. And the information gets automatically pulled up to it. And it's pretty much great. But I see some glaring disadvantages with this. Personally, this would never, ever work in America. 
I mean, it seems to me that it's a huge invasion of privacy, especially since they need you to authenticate yourself with your bank's account. That, that's, I don't know. I mean, that's pretty big for me. Then the government can track you. Like, they can track you whether or not you got your COVID shot because your COVID information was also pulled up into the system. And it gets even worse. They can send you, like, letters, fines, requests, that kind of stuff, right? A lot of dogs over there. A lot of like little uh, Yorkies over there trying to bark at me. But um, yeah, like I think this DS system is very invasive. It's very like one way, one directional. And I hope it never gets adopted in America. And uh, yeah. The number five thing I want to talk about is healthcare and medicine. Yeah, you probably saw that one coming. I mean, it's a pretty big deal to me as I noticed it here in Ukraine. Ukraine has a lot of these clinics and pharmacies and America has them too but it seems to me that in Ukraine you can do a lot of things without prescriptions without getting appointments without uh, getting you know waiting months to see specialists you can see specialists the next day this is very very convenient and of course in both countries you have the thing about paying for health insurance however in Ukraine it's much cheaper and uh, in Ukraine doesn't have these exorbitant emergency uh, room costs and wait times and that sort of thing and uh, it's a pretty big headache here in America apparently but as they say I think preparation and research is very important it's key that applies to both America and Ukraine you cannot come to Ukraine and be unprepared for what could hit you right and in America the same thing applies for example breaking your arm like without covering your behind, so to speak. Uh, pretty stupid thing to do. You have to know what you're getting into. Uh, at the same time for Ukraine, uh, God forbid you have some kind of a, you know, rare infection or cancer or something. Many Ukrainians have no choice but go to Germany, go to Israel to get treatment. That, that happens as well. Then number six, the beauty industry. Well, this one really has no ifs or buts uh, and caveats there. Reality is the beauty industry in Ukraine is very, very good. And like uh, all the procedures and hair salons are great. And the pedicure industry is great. The uh, medicure industry is great. Manicure industry, sorry, is great. America, I think, has a long way to, before it can get there. I mean, there are lots of professionals in uh, America. Don't get me wrong. But um, Ukraine just has way more. It's on another level entirely. And um, essentially what it means is that you can keep up your style, your look for very little and you can look great all the time, you know, it's very accessible to everyone. So there are many other things that I can mention like uh, walkable cities and the types of service and customs you can get by living in Ukraine that are different. But I don't want this to turn this video into the um, an America versus Europe sort of video. And uh, you know, so let, let, let's leave it as that. Let's leave it at these six things. I will be remiss if I don't say that aside from these things, I do think that the Ukrainian mentality is very much aligned with the American mentality. They really are. So I want there to be more alignment. I want Ukraine to get, you know, rule of law. I want Ukraine to be a free country. I want Ukraine to have the choice that Americans are offered, right? And the freedoms. But the question is, what kind of Ukraine are we gonna have 10 years from now? This is the question that everybody wants to, wants to know, right? And it's very hard for me to answer this, but I'll try to answer it in the following way. The biggest issue really is the fact that Ukrainian society is getting sort of like distributed all over the place into many different, not only geographical areas, but in these many different like layers. Um, you have Ukrainians like myself, uh, an era, right? Uh, who have abandoned Ukraine temporarily to live abroad and to try to build our life from scratch. I mean, the people that have left Ukraine, they have a choice. They can either avoid the war, I think that's the wrong thing to do, or keep track of what's happening in Ukraine and to try to help in every possible way. But I think most people have this constant feeling of guilt uh, for leaving our people uh, behind 
and we're always questioning like basically the unfairness of life like i mean why are we safe where while other people are uh, you know suffering they're like hiding under under bombs in basements they, they have to experience air raid sirens every day and they have to you know put their life in danger essentially and uh, i know that i ask this question myself and ira asks this question herself all the time as well the other type of people that we have are um, people that are living in Kiev, Odessa, Kharkiv, and everywhere else in Ukraine. They cannot completely avoid the war, no matter how much they want to do that. And uh, they cannot really disassociate themselves from it. They have to continue living their lives. And, um, you know, through these rolling blackouts, through these shortages of electricity, uh, through these uh, shortages of, you know, essential items like food and, and clothes and maybe, you know, uh, fuel. And these lives are obviously very different from my life. Then there are the third group of people. These are the guys and gals. They are protecting the lives of the Ukrainian people. They are protecting their uh, brothers in arms as well. And uh, they're fighting a particularly savage invading army of Russians. On weeks of end, without a, a little break, without stopping. And this war is with them all the time. And I understand how this can change into a war that they have with, I don't know, I guess an enemy, but it's a, war, it's a war that they're fighting, you know, one on one, essentially. And I really hope that all Ukrainians, especially the ones in the third category, uh, end up finding peace in the years ahead. And Putin specifically wants to traumatize and ruin the entire generations of Ukrainians. It's pretty obvious by now. He wants them not to be able to enjoy lives of self-determination. Putin wants them to be traumatized, essentially. So as you can see, this is a war on an entire way of life, which Ukraine is bravely bearing for the rest of us who live it, right? Including those that live abroad and in Ukraine. Anyway, like I said, I hope Ukraine can move ahead and move past these things and um, it can improve itself and improve the, some of the things that I mentioned in this video to make it even better. But uh, when that will happen and um, how successful that's going to be and how su successful this transformation will be is anybody's guess. Um, I think that as I live here, I will think of ways, uh, like I said, to collect information, to uh, stay true to Ukraine. And um, like I said, guys, your support matters. You can, uh, you know, share this video, put a like at it. And um, let me know what you think in the comments below, as always. And uh, until next time, guys, and take care.